Come on! Boom! In the room, shake, shake, shake the room. Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the captain. And today, it is our wonderful, wonderful, enjoyable task of showing off to you these beautiful Faith guitars. These beautiful acoustics. So Faith guitars, uh, bizarrely, still not available in every single country in the world, which is a shame really, because for many years in the UK now, we've uh, had access to this amazing range of guitars designed mm. by the very clever Patrick Eggle, mm. um, you know, of Patrick Eggle guitars from some years ago. Um, He's a clever guy. I learned something from him today what via you know? Alex. Go on then. So did you. Oh, the, the, you know the, sometimes when you're yes. um, restringing an acoustic guitar, the peg gets pushed out by the string. Uh, what I've always done, chappers of yore, as I've, I've got my hand as if I was to feed a small pony <laughs> and I fed it into the sound hole and then I've pulled the little metal ball over so it slides up the back of yeah. the peg. And I just went, no, what Patrick does is he just bends the end of the string. Bends the string before you put it yeah. in. Put, anyway. anyway. Everyone's so, going to go, well, I've been doing that for years now. But. So Faith, uh, Faith guitars are um, made in a very small family-run factory in Indonesia. And isn't that the only thing they make in that factory? I think it's like 99% of what they make yeah. in that factory is just is just Faith guitars. And it's a fairly small range that in the UK sells from around about sort of the 350 mark up to probably the 1000 mark. Um, and so it's kind of competing in that sort of high mid to high end Far Eastern range or you know very low end American kind mm. of range. But there's a couple of things about Faith that really, really stand out to me. Uh, and part of the reason why I suspect over the last five or six years they've won, you know, that they've had their guitars voted as best sort of sub thousand pound guitars, uh, acoustic guitars, pretty much every year since we've been doing them. The two things that stand out is, is the timber selection mm. is superb. Mm. Um, right down to the Naked series that Rob is using. And we'll run through the timbers in a minute. But also just the detail of, of just how the guitars come through. The setups are immaculate, the, the craftsmanship is immaculate. And they don't skip on the quality, do they? That's the thing. No. They put ebony wherever they can put it. Yeah. And, and it's kind of, it's one of those brands where you just go, I get it. You know, everybody wants the right name at the headstock. You know, we're, we're drawn to Martins and Taylors and Yamahas and Fenders and Gibsons and all the rest. And I get that Faith will never, you know, Faith can't compete with that because you know they don't have the black and white picture of John Lennon strumming a Faith guitar because it just didn't exist back then. So I just think they've had to work doubly, triply hard mm. uh, to, to convince people to look at their guitar but they've, range. they've absolutely stepped up. And they up. totally nailed yeah. it. first acoustic I ever bought was a Faith. I've told this story many times yeah. before, but it was the first time I found an acoustic that felt like it was one yeah. thing resonating together. Yeah. And they play really, really nicely. Wait. Wait. You That's know what? a handy point to demonstrate the fact that... That is a, a really tuning. handy yes. point. To I've got a tuning button right here that I can use to tune the guitar, which we can speed up and it'll sound and look really cool. So having just tuned my guitar with my guitar, no stompy on the floor, rubbish from me. It sounds like a great guitar. So the key to understanding the faith range is the first thing you got to do is pick a favourite planet. Um, because the way they uh, denote the body shapes within the faith range is uh, they give it a planet's name. So, so the three that we have today are all the Venus shaped guitars. Because Venus, um, the goddess of love, had a, had a low cut uh, shell bra. And so this is the, the super cut. To represent Venus's... Yeah, so Venus is course. the most popular size. Venus is a, is a shape that, that sort of many brands are sort of claimed to be the shape that they designed, you know, Takamini back in the day, Taylor more recently. It's kind of like a, you know, big bottom, skinny waist, um, 
you know, just my a, ideal woman. Yeah. So basically, it, it's kind of just a generally, it's great sound, nice and comfy to play. But it's not the only shape they do. You know, they do they do other planets, the Mercury, the uh, Saturn, Saturn, the Jupiter. So yeah. if you just, I'll put a link in the description below to where you can see more. So if you know that you've got a, a certain size guitar that that you prefer, small, you know, parlor size through to Super Jumbo or regular Dreadnought, whatever then that's your starting point with the Faith range, is find your sort of planet that you like. And also, uh, I think it's fair to they say... they don't have a planet called... They don't have a model called Uranus. No. I think, I think they should. Or, or that's Earth. Next. Or Earth. Which is the only planet yeah. so far that we found with life. You think but they'd not, start with you, ours. You, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But I guess um. not. say that they're really great prices mm. but what I don't want the wonderful ladies and gentlemen to think is that because they are such lovely prices that they're not really high quality I oh, know that they're, they're great value these so once you've chosen your 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 shape that you like the range basically goes from the naked series um, which is a real kind of attempt by faith to say what's the really really key most important structural components to a guitar and that's the timbers it's made from and the choice of timber. Um, and, then, and then essentially just get rid of everything else uh, to keep the price as affordable as possible. So this is a, well tell them about what the timbers are. Well, so the, the one difference I absolutely immediately noticed was that this is made of rosewood. Yeah. Uh, the bridge, what do you call it, just the bridge? Yeah. The bridge is made of rosewood, whereas on the others it's made of ebony. Yeah. Which does have a difference in, in tonality. It's, I think it's slightly warmer. Yeah. Um, and that kind of goes nicely with the sort of warm, fat, fuzzy, over lovely sounds that this produces. We've got um, spruce on the top. Now, yeah. this is not just any old spruce, it's is it? Engel... Engelman. Engelman spruce. Yeah. Engelman from North America. All sourced from North America. Good quality spruce top. And it's solid. Yes. Uh, and then the back and sides are made of mahogany. Yeah. So the back and the sides on. on... Oh, and the neck, sorry, I should yeah. say. And the, the, the mahogany on these is locally sourced in Indonesia, so it's a, it's a, a North American Macassan spruce top. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. So it's a two-piece body. Now, the, the, the key thing here is you're, you're probably, if you're not familiar with Faith Guitars, you're sort of going, well, I don't, I don't know that you've said anything that's particularly staggered me yet. The, the staggering bit is the back and sides on every single Faith guitar in the range are solid timbers. Mm. So this guitar here is about 400 pounds. Uh, you'll go, I defy anybody to sort of find another guitar at that kind of price point, this kind of quality, where the whole guitar is made of solid timbers. Maple um, binding on this one? Is and, it maple uh, or is it just, well, I think it's just no said. binding. We no, said maple binding's on this oh, one. Oh, that one, yeah, that's got maple so, binding. So the idea is that- Oh, it's so, revealed. So naked, Naked really, it does what it says on the tin, you know, no binding, very simple rosette, no gloss finish. Uh, the Venus version of this does so have a, a Whenever pick you up talk, my A string is going. Oh, really? You've got such a lovely low frequency a, a, a voice. A, it's just, it's sort of going, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Are you sure it's something? not <laughs> alert that every time I say that, A comes up, goes up? Um, so it's just a, you know, they, they, so whereas there's no case with this guitar, you know, the, the rosette is very uh, plain, there's no binding on the neck. You know, it doesn't it's just, matter because it's a great yeah, guitar. Yeah, so this guitar is your working stripped down. You haven't paid for anything that you don't need on this guitar. And you and can play high notes. Like that, uh, yeah, and there's two other shapes that this comes in as well. Uh, so again, go check, if, if the Venus isn't your thing, go check out the website. Uh, but come on, Rob, give us a strum, a strum -a -roo.
I want to keep playing it. You do. It makes you me do. want to write stuff. So look, I want you to swap over to this next guitar because that's the obvious sort of next one up. So yeah, just as a reminder, uh, something like this is going to set you back about four hundred pounds. So we've just stepped up uh, one guitar in the range uh, up to the high gloss series. So the same applies. Lots of different planet shapes, if you like, that you like on this. But the the difference between high gloss and naked is we've got, still using a mahogany back and sides uh, and an Engelmann spruce top, but the, the mahogany back and sides is selected locally, a, a more premium source of mahogany, so uh, selected for sort of nicer grain patterns and, and superior tone. Still solid, ebony uh, bridge, ebony kind of veneer on the headstock now, ebony buttons, which looks great, uh, a nicer rosette. Um, binding on the back and front. Binding on the body. Uh, same pickup though, it's actually the same pickup pretty much throughout the entire range except for the Eclipse series which we're not showing today but that's another story and we may have even done an Eclipse video years ago, I can't remember but whatever. Yeah. Um, and you'll notice this has a gloss front but a natural back and sides and the whole thing of glossing guitars is, is kind of a, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a sort of something that some people prefer their guitars to look, you know, uh, open and, and um, Sort of plain. Other people like the sort of the shininess of the gloss. It does um, alter the sound as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it it's very much depends on on the sort of thickness of the lacquer. That you know, the art here is to get the thinnest kind of lacquer on the front of the guitar. So that what will absolutely happen with the Naked series is, as your arm is, you know, strumming away like this, the sweat and dirt and general stuff from your arm will begin to discolor the the wood. And because it's completely open pore, you won't be able to clean that off. It'll just it'll just gradually get dirtier. And your, your uh, faith naked that you've got is a great example of a dirty looking acoustic it's a guitar. Dirty guitar. Uh, if you have a gloss finish on there, obviously it'll keep the guitar a little bit more pristine. There's been all sorts of things that I've read over the years about gloss finishing guitars to help with um, humidity and moisture uh, sort of retention and uh, what other you know and tone. People talking about you know applying different thicknesses of lacquer and stuff to, to change the tone of the guitar. Um, I'm sure there's a whole page on Wikipedia about, you know, what, do, you know, how much arm does. sweat affects the yeah. natural tone but, of the guitar. But I think it's probably fair to say that, you know, just how the guitar looks is a big driver for, for having a gloss finish on yeah, it. Yeah, I did notice but, that the, yours was louder than mine. And I think that's got a lot to do with the lacquer being tighter. And so it's- Mine, um, is, mine is different wood, but we'll come on to, look, you, you yeah. do, let's, let's have a little play. Immediately, I can feel that it's yeah. it's a more focused sound yeah. Yeah. and it's brighter as well, much yeah. much brighter than the other. But just and that's that, also and, a lovely and, tone. But and this just is so a you know as well, um, all three guitars have got brand new strings on them. So if you're hearing, you know, sort of brightness and things like that, it's not to do with yeah, one guitar uh, having old Because Lee strung one literally about yes, an hour ago. About an hour ago. <laughs> It's quite slippery. <laughs> it's a bit like it's been uh, fast fretted. That could be the strings. Could be. What does it come with? Uh, 11 to 56 Daddario's, I think. Or yeah. 54, something like that. Um, what else you got on this? Uh, so every guitar in the Faith range outside of the Naked series comes with a hard case. Um, what else can we tell you? I just think it's a great sounding guitar. So something like this is going to set you back about six fifty. Chrome tuners. Yeah. Again, Wait, I've got a list of stuff. Have you? Yes. The two way access with neck. Macus. It is Macus ebony. Indonesian mahogany. Uh, quarter sawn scallop spruce. Tusk nut and saddle. Not from an elephant. It's the name of the material. Ebony you know, and abalone you know bridge pin. Quarter sawn is. Uh, no. Quarter sawn <laughs> is um, a specific I do, but I way. To tell you. Oh, okay. It's a specific way of cutting timber uh, so that it goes with the nicest looking grain. And some people would argue again, perhaps uh, by cutting it in a certain way, and uh, that this allows the timber to be more resonant. But it's not the most efficient way of cutting 
timber from a tree. So uh-huh. in other words, you don't you, you don't get the maximum amount of wood. So it's generally again, it's another more expensive way of of of, har- of you know mm. harvesting timber if you like for guitar making. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's. that's I didn't know it was less economical. Well, that's why it's more expensive to do it that way because you look, you know, essentially you're not able to use as much of the wood as yeah. was in the tree. Uh-huh. Um, well. So, it's a thick sounding guitar. Yeah. So that's the um, natural series. So I've got the high gloss. Now, as, as the name would suggest, uh, this is a completely gloss finished guitar, except for the back of the neck, which is still satin. But the most obviously beautiful thing on a high gloss oh. guitar is that the back and sides now are solid Indonesian rosewood. Two piece body. Uh, not every guitar will have this kind of um, little sort of lighter colored sort of V in it. It's very much going to be a unique thing for each guitar depending on what the the uh, you know the timber is um, but beautiful the, you know back and sides are beautiful uh, the rattling you hear inside is my little bag of silica gel that they ship with to keep them dry um, it's got the most fancy rosette uh, same uh, it's got beautiful flame maple binding um, it's a stunning looking guitar it's absolutely fabulous how does it <laughs> fabulous uh, how does it sound Lee? That's beautiful. It's great. I mean, and again, typically speaking, you know, urban myth, whatever, suggests that, you know, mahogany back and side guitars are a little bit more focused in the mid range. Uh, rosewood uh, back and side guitars tend to have a slightly fuller bass end. Uh, the spruce adds the sparkle on the top end. But that's where you hear it. The bottom E. Play just an E, you know, like an E minor chord. You can... you can hear that. You can hear that difference in between the two guitars. Um... This is my new little riff that I was playing with, and you know, perhaps if if, I've, if this isn't mine and I've ripped it off of someone else, I apologise. You know, but I like it. Anyway, and you, and Ron nice. and I did a jam. It's a lovely little chord you know what, thing, isn't it? It is, and you know what's cool about acoustic guitars? If you don't own an acoustic guitar, go and get one because they're wicked little writing tools. Yeah. And almost every song that I've ever written with Dorje has been on an acoustic, or, or I've been sat down playing, you know, unplugged yeah. and electric, but mostly acoustic guitar, because there's something about them that just forces you into this place of creativity. Yeah. I always remember as well, you know, it absolutely used to be back in when I was learning to play guitar that kind of all the nasty guitar tutors would go, you have to learn on an acoustic guitar because it's much harder to play than electric and it'll kind of build your finger strength. And, you and there's a certain amount of that, that that still is sort of true, isn't it? That that sort of, you know, the idea of basically playing on a guitar where the strings are much heavier and thicker and so you build up those calluses and you get yeah. used to sort of playing. I, I've always told beginners to start on, on electric yeah. because it's so much easier to play. It doesn't put them off to begin with. Yeah. But I would say every guitar player needs an acoustic mm-hmm. guitar. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that's where teaching um, sort of philosophies have changed, haven't they? Yeah. You know, back in the old days, it was all about making it as hard as possible nah. to sort of, you know, sort of, that was it. You know, if you weren't committed, you would like get rid of you. Yeah, Whereas yeah, now yeah. it's kind of like about making well, it I, as easy see, as possible. It's interesting that because I taught for about eight years yeah. so, like, professionally, that's all I did full time. Um, and I, I would always judge it on the person. So if I had a huge builder <laughs> who's full time laboring, he would need 12 gauge strings on an acoustic to begin with, because if he just touches the string, he's gonna fret it down and yeah. tune it up. Whereas a little six-year-old girl, I'd easily happily put eights on an electric, and then yeah. she's really at home and she can yeah. bend and fret. So it's about fitting it to the uh, person. I, I would agree with you. Most important thing I think about uh, playing the guitar is just lots of gain. play it. Yeah, and have lots of gain. No, just play it. You know as much as you can. So whatever you like. If you know yeah. if your favorite thing is a is a you know three quarter length strap with the lightest strings you can find, then happy days. And if you yeah. like a big old acoustic with the heaviest strings you can find, then 
happy days. So, why don't you go? Uh, these are beautiful. I own one. And uh, actually, I pretty much own one of everything that Faith makes because I'm very much in love with Faith Acoustic Guitars. And they're very nice people too, aren't they? I'm going to... Play the acoustic guitar, all of a sudden, you rehash you just, old blues you, licks. Well, and you just go somewhere, don't you? And you just think, I'm not on camera anymore, I'm just sitting in my living room yeah. playing old blues tunes. And well, when I was a kid, I used to play Metallica on my acoustic guitar. Well, I never did that, you know, yeah. I, was, I was old before my time. Oh, yeah. So, there we go. Look, that's our little faith run through. I can't really, you know, speak highly enough for these guitars, they, they deserve all the awards they've won. They're they have won a lot of awards, too. yeah, I know. Uh, and if you're if you're unfortunate enough to live in a country where faith guitars don't uh, aren't sold, then you know what can I say other than you know go and encourage your local retailer to try oh, and surely, buy some. Somewhere. Surely you could ship one to anywhere in Europe. Pretty yeah, much. I mean Europe's not a problem, and I always worry a little bit about you know the the, the, the further away the guitar goes, uh, the more I sort of worry about what happens to it in transit. Don't worry about that. Buy one uh, anyway, be fine. Uh, particularly with an acoustic guitar, but I don't know. I mean, there, there's I suppose. We we airship everywhere while, rather than sea freight, so it's only it's only not in our store or in your house for a matter of two or three days, I suppose. So yeah. um, how much damage can happen in that time? Hopefully Hardly none. Hardly none. <laughs> so look, there we go. Look, you, you've been hearing in this demo a mix of, of these microphones and a, and a room mic and the very excellent shadow um, uh, in, onboard pickup that's in here. Uh, just blend it all together to get the, the nicest tone in a magic can. way from my lovely um, sound guy, Rabir Massad. Rabir Massad, or Billy Two Cakes, as he's going to be known in every video for the rest of today until he buys me the cakes that he ate of mine. Uh, uh, I've been Rob Chapman. <laughs> and I've been the captain. Bye.